All right, what's up, everybody? I'm trying out a new segment here where I'm in my streaming setup without the lights in the back, but am uh, wanting to do some clips, right? Some people have asked me questions on, Brandon, what is your price prediction for Pulse Chain? And what is your price prediction for Hex? Well, in this video, I want to do both, and I want to explain why. Now that I think of it, I probably should have separated it into two different videos. But the point is this, right? A lot of people ask me, oh, Hex isn't going to, or sorry, uh, Pulse isn't going to do a thousand X because you know so much was sacrificed in total, and you've got such a large supply that it can never do a thousand X because the market cap would just mean multiple trillions or yada yada yada. Well, the same argument was used for Hex, and they said the same thing, uh, especially on Big Payday, right? When the origin address, uh, maybe like a day before or something like that, the origin address had staked. Well, guess what? We saw that same behavior with Pulse Chain and with the sacrifice. And a lot of us, myself included, you can go back on my history saying this, that I thought that that was going to happen. That, of course, the origin address is going to sacrifice because why not? Why fix something that's not broken, right? And we see how the system with Hex has worked with its massive economic centralization. And we see that it's worked very, very well, very successfully. I mean, you look at what uh, banks are, you look at what uh, traditional corporations are, Amazon, Facebook, Google, things like that, Apple, and they're all very financially centralized. And the point that I wanna get into to not make this too long of a video, I can kind of go in a little bit more in depth than I'd like since I'm combining both to one. But so when people ask me, hey, what do you think your price prediction is for Pulse? I like not to use the decimal or what the price will be in dollars because who the hell knows especially with it starting off at zero but i like to use it in terms of x's or percentage gain so hex did over 1300 you know 39 x something like that on its first year before staking why not the same thing for pulse right you already have mechanisms in pulse that are that are very well and very tested and true to what Hex has done and what Hex is doing. And we look at Hex right now, and well, what do you know? Hex is at 19 cents. But let me uh, let me just take a look at the share screen. I kind of want to get into the explanation of the, the Beers Diamond an analogy when it comes to economic centralization. It's not a bad thing. Now let's, uh, let's share the screen and kind of tell you what I'm talking about for those that are new. So for those that are also new, this website is called hex.vision, H-E-X dot V-I-S-I-O-N. It was made by a developer that co-created Staker app. His name is Firebun and honestly hasn't been on stream in forever. So maybe I'll reach out to him and do my first ever stream with him. But let's just go into the numbers and, and see what this means, right? So since December 3rd, 2019, Hex, has had 61,532 unique addresses. This is great. And just look at the penalties too, right? Hex and Pulse are obviously very different, but especially PHEX on, on Pulse, it's going to operate the exact same as Hex. And all these penalties and stuff like that will be the same at the day of the snapshot, the block height of the snapshot. But look at this, nearly 3 billion Hex have been pretty much, uh, yeah, pretty much lent, right? Because they've been emergency end staked. And those penalties have gone to me, many other people, uh, the stakers of last resort. Trace Mayer liked to say the uh, like the the, whole, the hodler of last resort. Well, in Hex, we have the data. This website is the most advanced data and analytics you can ever get. And so not only do we have the narrative and the motto and the saying of, hey, we're hexakins, bolshakins, stuff like this, but we've got the data to prove it. So let's just take a look at the hex that was currently staked, right? So this is a, a three, the cool thing about this website too, real quick, is you can just change the, the time range right here. And you know you can copy to dashboard, you can inspect and get all the data itself. So I chose the last three years because hex has not been around for longer than three years, right? Now let's get into the data. So you might just see something kind of like uh, sticking out, right? In this, in this chart. And let's just point out the elephant in the room right here. So, these were the stakes for Big Payday. And you can just see that with the OAA, uh, the OA, the origin address, and the sister addresses, just the percentage stake and the actual amount stake goes up significantly. Well, 
that was just to gain all of that supply and to have pretty much like that De Beers uh, analogy. And it's it's really it's really similar to Pulse Chain, right? I see this Colin Talks crypto guy that wasn't in Hex. He did his little free claim on Bitcoin, which was auto staked for at least 351 days. And then when he realized, oh, this Hex thing that I had free free claimed, it went up in price. He dumped it for ETH. He um he was bitching and complaining about, oh my God, the Pulse Chain, uh, the OA from Hex sacrificed and now it's massively centralized. And it's like, well, thank God you weren't there for Hex because you probably would have made a video that was similar. But the point is this, right? Is the economic centralization is not something that you should worry about. There's this thing that Richard talks about called the parade of imaginary horribles. And it's exactly what goes on with stuff that is very successful when it comes down to, like I said, uh, these arguments that are made against Richard that's proven himself over time the past four and a half years that I followed him, he's proven himself over time to me and to someone that myself can, can judge good character to. But it's that saying of like, why would you cut off your nose to spite your face? And, and why would you shoot your own project uh, in the foot type deal, uh, as far as an analogy goes, just to gain, you know, a couple of shekels, as opposed to growing it and expanding it into the, like, just like with Amazon, right? Uh, There's a point where uh, Amazon dropped like 95% and had a huge dip. And guess what? It's still very uh, economically centralized. But the point is this, is when it comes to De Beers, when it comes to De Beers Diamonds, when it comes to uh, Jeff Bezos with Amazon, when it comes to Elon Musk with Tesla, when it comes to uh, not Steve Jobs, but the new guy, Tim Cook or whoever, right? With with Apple. The, the point is, is you don't hear these shitty ass arguments against traditional corporations and what cryptocurrency is trying to do and what hex is trying to do is replace those not necessarily corporations but the banks and stuff like that and so why are people complaining on stuff that works in the traditional system my my guess is because they actually don't know how it works and they're not too knowledgeable to realize oh banks work like this and these corporations and companies that have been successful since the 90s work like this and at the end of the day, what it comes down to is, hey, I would rather have the financial economic energy. I would rather have that be centralized into proven, trustful, benevolent entities that have proven themselves over time, as opposed to like Richard talks about Bitcoin. Bitcoin still has a Bitcoin rich list, but as far as like the, the centralized 2000 wallets. But even still, it, it dips 85, 90, you know, 90, probably 85 actually percent. But the point is this, is people think that just because it's centralized into one entity or multiple entities or a group of entities, that all of a sudden that makes it negative for price. And what we're seeing with De Beers Diamonds is just because they had like 80, 90 percent supply of the coffers back in the day, they didn't just randomly just dump their whole supply of useless diamonds onto the market because then they would be useless, right? The, the price itself would, uh, would go down because the demand would be filled by the big supply that was you know, being introduced into the market. And so Richard talks about Pulse Chain and he's not gonna say specific details, but he's going to say that, hey, what if that 95% of um, Pulse, like Pulse uh, supply, what if that supply that you never saw well, guess what? Then that supply issue of it being multiple trillions isn't relevant anymore because now you have 5% of the supply that you thought it was going to be. And it's just similar with Hex. Like a lot of people didn't think it was going to reach a penny. It did. And I think same thing with Pulse Chain that, you know, I think that it could personally 1,000x in the first year. And I think Hex is just going on its parabola. I think it's going to 1,000x within a year as well. And so that's my price predictions. That's why, that's my opinions. And I hope everyone's doing well, right? We got Knights of Crypto tonight with myself, Motley. I think it's on Motley's channel. So definitely go check it out. And really looking forward to, right, this, this retirement life, being able to be retired, but still working for the community and just knowing that, hey, the income is, uh, is there and that's not a worry that I have to do or a time trade of, you know, my hours for dollars. So Thank you, everyone. Hope you like this clip. It's a two for one. And uh, see everyone on.